uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom. G'day guys, I'm Bushka. I'm going to talk to you about uh, three big ticket items here. The first one's going to be a sniping thing, then we're going to talk about a hot drop thing, and then we're going to talk about a teamwork thing on a hot drop. If you do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, like the videos, that would be great. I play with Ace Lawrence, Fake Jacob, Fates, all those kind of people, Metalcore, um, lots and lots of content creators and, and community contributor kind of people. Uh, one of the people that I play with Ace is renowned as a shotgun specialist. And I will talk to Ace all the time and say, hey, you want to have a game? And sometimes you'll go, yeah, let's play, but I've got to finish these TDMs first. And he's practicing before he plays. He's getting warmed up. He's going and doing TDMs to get his hands working, his aim working, getting loose and, and warmed up. I want to point out to you that I play a lot of sniping and would it surprise you when I make a lot of crazy shots that you, would you be surprised to know that I go and practice that a lot? So I will go and sit on a training uh, on a training room area. I don't go to the cheap park, I go to the training room because I can go on my own there. And I will just hit headshot after headshot after headshot. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to slow this down and I'm going to point out to you why it's so important to be able to hit just two shots in a row. Watch this guy, he knows what he's doing. He's gonna peek one side of the wall, the right side of the wall. We get a good chest shot there. And then I re-peek and he re-peeks, but he re-peeks the left side of the wall. And we don't even need any time. We immediately just automatically go to him and hit that headshot. And he's not. That is the result of sitting in a training room and banging out sniper shots. You get a Mark 14, you put an Adex on it, and you put it on single fire, and you get exactly the same experience as you do with a bolt action sniper rifle. Being able to hit multiple headshots in a row through tiny little targets like that is something that will absolutely, and that's that's two kills right there because we hit two headshots in a row. All right, so Ace Lawrence is out there practicing. I'm out there practicing. Um, are you out there practicing? Because if you're not practicing, the other guys are, and they're getting better. I know that it is so much harder to win these days. This is particularly on a hot drop. We're gonna talk a little bit here about uh, weapon selection, but mostly I'm gonna talk about on, in this particular clip about just being patient, okay? Um, when I die on hot drops, generally it's because I try to constantly do everything in top gear. Um, you don't need to. I mean, you can track footsteps, you can figure out where people are, and if you take your time, you can even set your weapons up, you can figure out what you want to run. I had a Mosin the Gant, but I swapped it out for a Abacan and an AKM. The Abacan's going to be my switch weapon. I don't like it very much, but it's fine. And I'm just looking for armor, heals, weaponry. And then we're slowly going to work our way through. Now, one of the beautiful things about hot drops is when there's more than you, like there's two players or three players or four players, you can isolate them one at a time if you don't like just sit still in a corner and hold an angle and actually start moving around. And you don't always want to waste your time thirsting. Thirsting is good, but only when you have an opportunity to clear them without taking any damage back. I'm actually using this guy here to try and bring people up and they didn't they didn't push me, they kind of held an angle. They're on top of the, the roof there, so I thirsted him, right? They weren't gonna come down, I thirsted him. They go back downstairs, I'm now chasing, I'm trying to get an angle on them. Look at how much time I'm taking to do this. It's not something that you wanna push. You don't wanna go too fast. You have to play at the speed that the defense is playing at. Like if if they're holding angles and you push in because you get frustrated, you will die. I know because it happens to me all the time. One of the things that I'm not doing this season is playing a lot of solos because I just found that my temperament this season wasn't suited. I was playing solos and people in solos are sweatier than this. Like people in solos are incredibly sweaty. They will just spend so much time holding an angle and they will never ever move. Thing is, you get some of those people in squads and if you rush and push, you might get one clear, but the guy that is out in the open has a mate who is behind a wall doing absolutely nothing. Now, you might say, well, Bushka, this isn't very exciting. This isn't the super duper whiz bang I was promised to be a massive solo squad killer. 
but no one else is coming. Is this the end of them? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know, but I'm using them. I can still hear someone's footsteps. Someone is around. We're now at three kills and we've got a good loadout. We've got lots of armor. We've got lots of ammo. It's not always going to be like this. It's not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to pick the right angles and flummox people by jumping off rooftops and that kind of thing. Sometimes you're going to be the hammer. Sometimes you're going to be the nail. But I can guarantee you that if you learn to slow down in these situations, you will absolutely be better for it. You will be a better player if you learn to slow down in these situations. If you learn to take your time in these situations and not treat it like the end of the world, you will be a better player. This is Killam and I, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is Killam and I on a hot drop. My God, I hate the iron sights from the UMP. But anyway, that is what it is. Um, there is a squad on us. We're playing duo squads, and we don't have a lot of gear. We have actually dropped uh, George Pole crates and got a lot of armor here. That is really, really good. But I left that bison in there so Killam could get, get a, uh, a weapon, right? Now, iron sights on the UMP at this range is bloody horrible. It's not a good look. It's not something that I'm keen on doing, and it's really just wasting ammunition. So I pull it, and we start looting again. Killam's got that bison, so we've now got a gun each, and we're going to push in. Teamwork, patience, continuity, okay? Another thing you're going to notice here is I am going to get a knock with the bison, uh, with the... What's this gun I've got again? The UMP. I'm going to get a knock with the UMP uh, on this guy in the car. Look at how much easier this gun is to use with a red dot versus iron sights. The AKM's iron sights are absolutely gorgeous. Watch, but watch how good the recoil profile on this gun is. Some guns are, this is the thing I wanted to talk about in terms of weapon selection. Some guns like the UMP are so incredibly good early game. The reason being that the higher the armor, the longer it takes to kill, the worse it is with guns like the UMP um, and the Uzi and things like that as you progress. Like mid-range engagements become very, very difficult. Uh, they have very slow bullet speed, all that kind of thing. But early on, when people have a mismatch of gear and don't have all the stuff, things like the UMP are absolutely brilliant. Now, we don't have any UMP ammo left and we've only got an over under. Killam drops me a little bit of uh, 45 that he had, he had 30. And so we've now got 30 rounds of UMP and shotgun. Killam's running that bison. And we're going to try and turn this into a winning situation. Now, this is a full squad. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. So that's one. We've already knocked one. That is the smoke that is there. I believe they're reviving him. Killam's got a knock over there as well. But I'm down to 17 rounds. I'm down to no rounds. And there we go. Killam was the meat there. He was literally just holding that angle, forcing them to wait. Um, and he had no ammo left when I made those shots. He was ended all over. Like, oh, dude, you've got to hit them. You've got to hit them. And that's teamwork. Did you see the angles we had there? The patience we showed, sharing the ammunition, working through the numbers, um, someone holding, just stopping them from moving forward while the other guy got to the flank. They're three really good situations to talk about. So practice on the range, uh, take your time on hot drops, and communicate with your teammates in a way that is meaningfully helpful towards your final goal of actually winning the engagement. Don't just beat your chest and yell and scream and do that kind of stuff. Um, work with your team, not work for yourself in a team, if you get my idea. Anyway, I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, I really enjoy making all this content. And uh, we'll be back more uh, with more of this uh, Same Bat Time, Same Bat Channel. If you could do me a huge favor and like the videos and subscribe, as always. I know it does seem crazy, but it's a nice thing to have. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll be on uh, oh, the Discord server. We've got a vanity URL, discord.gg forward slash the Bushka. And if you are a Nitro user and you want to boost the server, there is a Bushka's booster role. When you boost the server, you get a new role and a new icon and stuff. Um, so hit that and... Bob's your mother's brother, discord.gg forward slash the Bushka. We've got 12 and a half thousand people on that server. So it's a really good number on the server. Uh, and we're going to be doing a live stream on, I think we're going to be doing a live stream on Thursday or fr Friday, Friday of this week. Uh, so look out for that. Anyway, until next time, bye for now.
see you later, etc., etc., etc. See ya.